why do I have two separate email lists? I have a content-based email list and I have a, what I call my launch list or basically my uh, sell, <laughs> selling list. And, and I'm gonna share my screen so I can show you what I mean by that. Uh, if you go to, I hope I get the right, um, I hope I got the right link. Yes, okay. If you go to georgecow.com slash newsletter options, you will see these two email lists that I have. Um, the best content list is basically, uh, well, I'm gonna click on both of these so you can see what they look like. So the best content email list basically says, hey, you're gonna get my, my best free article, videos and articles in your inbox. And I even offer a link to check out what the, what the archive is so you can see um, you know, what, what they look like. And for the best content list, they can either join it monthly or weekly. Again, this is a complication that probably most of you don't need to at the beginning of your business. Um, but my audience really appreciates having, having both of these options. So, and then I have my offers list, my workshops and coaching, which is like, you know, hey, do you want me to sell to you two to three times a month? I usually only send two emails per month, but I, but I put three just to set the set of rice expectations. And because I'm selling to you, I have to put my, my dog in there so that you're more willing to actually join this thing. <laughs> so literally, if you, if you join this list, you're only going to get, um, and this list is where, you know, now people can join both lists, by the way, you know, you can join, you can join each one separately. Um, the reason I have that is because I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to really uh, give my audience the courtesy of not getting my sales emails if they didn't want that. So I, that's what I started as. I started, um, well, I, every, I started like everybody else with just one single email newsletter. And that had, sometimes I sold stuff there and sometimes I just sent an article or video there, just like everybody. But then after a while, as my audience grew, I'm like, you know what? I, and I went through my whole authentic marketing uh, you know, uh, transition I said, let me give this a try where it's like, I give them that choice. And so I kept everyone on the content list. And then I said, hey, do you want to also sign up for now? I'm going to stop I, on this content list. I'm just going to focus on content. I still will have, even in my, let me, let me show you what I mean. Even in my content emails, okay? So for example, this one, even in my content emails, I usually mention usually the final bullet point is where I sell something. Let me actually give a better example. So this is, this is one, I hope this is an example here. So this is one of my content email newsletters. And at the end, yes, I have a pre-launch pre -launch sale uh, for my upcoming course. So, so even the content one has a little bit of selling, but it's at the bottom, not at the top, but at the bottom so that they feel like they got, they, they got what they came for. And yet I want a special place where I want to send dedicated emails about, hey, this is coming up. You might want to buy this if you're interested. So that's why I did that. Um, most of you are not at the place. Now you might say, well, George, when am I ready to do this? Well, I would say um, I, I'm going to put an arbitrary number out here. And it's, you know, but it's like once you have, let's say, I don't know, let's say um, 200 people on average, opening your e opening opening your emails on a regular basis, which may mean that you have, you know, uh, eight hundred to a thousand subscribers or something like that. So uh, again, that's a ballpark. That's just kind of my gut sense. Like once you have maybe two hundred people opening each email, then you can maybe give them the uh, the courtesy to say, "Hey, I have the separate list," because out of two hundred people who open the email uh, about your announcement about the separate list, eh, maybe. Um, I mean, maybe 20 of them, right? will join the list, the separate list. That's a good start. Now these 20 people are, are true fans. Like they are, they are so interested in your work that they're willing to receive emails just selling to them. And of course you can tell them, hey, just two emails a month or two, three emails a month, which I recommend, you know, keep it gentle. So I hope that helps. And, um, you know, again, most of you can bookmark this for, for the future. One thing I do want to mention is that every time someone buys one of my courses or every new student or new, every new customer or client that I get, I automatically add them to both of these newsletters. To be clear, I add them to my monthly content newsletter and I add them to my selling newsletter as well.
all of my customers, all of my new students, all, all of you who are here watching this are probably, you know, I'm recording this during one of my student Q and A. So all of you, sorry, <laughs> but I, I automatically added you to those, to those, I add you know, the, the monthly content and the, and the two emails a month selling you something. Um, I have never gotten a complaint up to this day, even though, even though I have a bunch of customers or students, clients from Europe, where they have much stricter rules around this GDPR. Even so, I have not gotten a complaint. Yes, I've gotten some unsubscribes. Now that's that should be that should go without saying, but it is important for me to say, please expect that, of course, every time you send I send out emails, I have unsubscribes. But as long as your unsubscribes are not higher than 1% of those who receive the email. Let's say your email was a thousand people. If you get 10 unsubscribes or less, you're doing fine because it's industry average. You're getting more than 1% unsubscribes with newsletters. There's something I wanna, you know, we should look at that because you, you may have built the email list using a way that they're not expecting to receive these things. But, um, but yeah, so uh, I think in my view, it's legit. Those of you in Europe, you're not allowed to do this because of GDPR. But even if you did it, I personally don't think your people will complain if you're only sending up to two sales emails per month. Most of you probably send only one. So, or even two every two or three months. But because I'm consistent with my rhythm, my, my audience has become accustomed to it. So they don't mind at all. Yeah, hope this helps.